Hey guys, welcome back. I've got a very busy day today. Um, this is gonna be very casual. Wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to come on here and do this, honestly, but does this outfit make my belly look big? <laughs> Let me show you a little bit better. I mean, when you've done this as many times as me, it's really hard to hide. I have a maternal fetal medicine appointment today. By the time you guys see this, I am probably just a few days away from my second trimester. And we have not really told hardly anybody yet. My kids have no idea still. This has obviously been a very anxious, trying to think of the right word, last few months. Um, things have went well. Um, I feel like I can't hide it anymore. <laughs> I feel like everywhere I go, like I'm trying to tie something around my waist, wear like oversized shirts. But like, like I shared, when you've done this as many times as I have, it's, for me, it's just really hard to hide. Um, so I have a big appointment today. It's my very first maternal fetal medicine appointment. So like high risk doctor appointment. Um, if you're new here, I have in the past year lost, I've had two losses in the past year and I had a, a second trimester loss, a baby boy, and then I had a 12 week loss in January of this past year. So it's been a year. This is my third time in just slightly over a year going through the first trimester, which is arguably like the hardest trimester. I'll have to like... I'm gonna give you guys lots of updates in this video because I feel like in the past, like I've kind of vlogged a little bit throughout the first several weeks and then kind of shared. I haven't done that this time. Honestly, I've been really nervous to do that. Um, I just kind of wanted to make sure things are gonna go well. And I feel like even at this point, I haven't, I don't know. Like, obviously we've lost a baby in the second trimester. You just never know and like I feel like up until delivery I'll kind of be very anxious about it but I'm gonna share lots more in this video we also know what this baby is so I'm sure we'll share that in this video too we um, found out like last week what the baby is me and Ethan did only me and Ethan know and after our last loss we just thought I just knew if we were able to do this again, I would probably find out because y'all know the last three pregnancies with Cal, my youngest, and then the last two, we were not gonna find out. We were gonna be teen green, not find out till birth, but it just felt right this time to find out. Um, anyways, I'll share lots of things. I'm trying to be very quiet. I have my door closed and so my kids don't hear me because they have no idea yet, but we'll probably tell them maybe after today's appointment if things go well. So come along for my day and lots of updates. We had our first day of co-op today and it went really well. I'm actually um, sitting in a parking lot waiting on Ethan. Um, drop, got the kiddos taken care of and Ethan was getting off work a little early today so we could go to my maternal fetal appointment together. I'm gonna share even more later on in this video but as i'm waiting um i am i think i shared i was just about in the second by the time you see this i would just be like a few days away from second trimester 14 weeks is officially the second trimester um i'm 13 weeks as of right now when i'm filming this um i'm not sure exactly when this is going to go up but um we i'm excited i'm nervous for this appointment but i'm excited to you always get a really good like in-depth ultrasound at maternal fetal medicine i went to maternal fetal medicine um, when i was pregnant with cal um for a few visits just like a few visits and i'm not exactly sure if i'll go the whole time this pregnancy or if i'll go for just a little while um we'll just kind of see because i eventually usually have a few complications as i get near the end and of course like the more pregnancies you have it can get even worse but um the biggest thing right now is my recurrent losses and then my second trimester loss and then i was 12 weeks at my last loss and um things are going well so far but i am very nervous and i know that 
because of the last two losses i know that it's a possibility that it eventually might not go well and that is my fear and i have just tried to stay positive stay hopeful that just because this happened the last two times does not mean it's going to happen this time and i am very hopeful that things are going to continue to go well um but anyways i'll share even more and kind of share how i felt how the first trimester went and all the things because it has not been easy keeping this secret and also not only that but i whenever i have a secret like this i feel very disconnected from social media until at least like i get that out there and i feel like i've been a little more silent than normal um, my videos have been a little bit different than normal a lot of my like eating videos and things like that um it's y'all many of you know at least many of you know how the first trimester goes at least it's very rough for me so we're gonna um wait on ethan we're gonna grab some lunch and we're gonna go and hope i'm so hopeful this appointment's gonna go well and everything's gonna be healthy and we're gonna walk out of there feeling good about it that is my prayer for today also while i'm waiting on ethan um i have wanted to share more throughout this process to kind of share my feelings and how this like the emotions with being pregnant after two back-to-back -back losses and it has been tough like I, I haven't picked up the camera I've filmed a little bit on my phone because I was like maybe I'll share these on some social media I don't know but I have not wanted to pick up the camera and share and film anything like in the past I've shared like appointments leading up to um, before I share like on social media and with y'all and it has been hard to want to document that because just I didn't know how things were gonna go and I was like if things don't go well again I don't think I want to document it I haven't been able to like fully document and share my feelings um, really we've kept all of this mainly to ourselves other than a couple people that are very close to me other than that I have not shared this with anybody mainly because I want if something were to happen I was I don't want my kids to have to go through it again and have to go through the emotions with me and they were so good and very resilient with it but I was thinking if something were to happen again I kind of I don't want to put them through that again and that's my biggest thing is kind of keeping it between us is hoping that we can kind of keep it between us for a while so that way um I just didn't want my kids knowing for a while just in case um and that is I'm kind of at the point now where if something were to happen soon I'm kind of at the point where I was with Cole and I would probably deliver and like with that it's like that it's a baby like it's a real baby like he was like such it was a real baby he was tiny had all of his fingers and toes and um it's kind of hard to I don't know but it's been hard to document that but I feel like I'm at a point now where it is so slim like the chances of something happening especially after 12 weeks they do happen obviously but the chances are very low and I keep telling myself that like even though it's happened before I'm hopeful it's not gonna happen again and the chances are very low Ugh, but it's been tough the first trimester even like where I'm at now is really tough because I passed the point from the last pregnancy I've passed that um, I'm close to the point where I was with Cole and I'm like if I could kind of get past that on past that for a while I might continue to feel better Ugh, it's just pregnancy after loss is really tough
So we are having a baby boy. Got lots of pictures from my maternal fetal medicine appointment yesterday. Um, I feel like I'm just gonna like go through everything. Um, I feel like I have shared so much with y'all over the years. Over the past year, slightly over that, um, with the hardships we faced in the last year that I thought I'd share in this video, kind of how things have been going, kind of from the beginning till now. And then when like Ethan and I found out the gender and telling the kids and kind of my first trimester, I still can't believe we're having a boy. Like it feels, if anybody's new here, we lost a baby boy last June. I delivered him and we found out he was a boy. We named him Cole and that was a very hard loss going to the hospital and having to deliver and going through those emotions like after delivery is really tough um it was like such a hard loss and just like holding your tiny little baby that looks so perfect even like his little features we kept saying he looks like our little boy cow our three-year-old it it was just so hard and then uh after that we found out we were pregnant again with a rainbow baby and everything went so well with that pregnancy the timing of it and everything i just was certain that that pregnancy was gonna go well i did not expect to lose that baby honestly i just knew things were gonna go well the timing of it was so perfect and then we lost that baby a day short of 12 weeks i was right at 12 weeks and we lost that baby and that was a tough loss too and then um it just feels like very redemptive um knowing that we're gonna have a baby boy we just we lost a baby boy i don't know what the second baby was we lost we weren't going to find out the gender of that baby and um it just feels redemptive like to have to deliver a baby a baby boy that couldn't bring home and um now to hopefully prayerfully be able to deliver hopefully a healthy baby boy um come next year it just feels like redemptive i feel like is the right word you know you hear of like redemptive births redemptive pregnancies i just feel like that's such a good word for it especially just now knowing that this baby's a boy um so i want to start at the very beginning we found out like the uh, towards the end of june that we were pregnant again um I haven't filmed anything on my camera at all. Like I haven't, I think I shared that. I haven't filmed anything just cause I was really afraid things were not gonna go well again. Something was gonna happen. And um, the we found out towards the end of June, I got blood work. I got lots of blood work um, after we found out. HCG levels, those were looking so good. I think I got like four levels drawn for that to make sure they were rising appropriately. Um, everything looked looked really well with that which was reassuring that um pregnancy was in the right place things were progressing well and then another big answer to prayer for me is i have been um i had to i had seen the same ob for many many years um really since like i got married i started actually before i got married i started seeing this ob and he stopped seeing pregnant patients. And there was another OB that I wanted so badly to start seeing. And uh, it was like my biggest prayer that if I, I wanted to, after we deliver Cole, I wanted to see this OB. And it just didn't work out with the last pregnancy. And it was my biggest prayer that I would be able to get in to see her and get established with her. And I was able to do that. And it has been um, such a relief to me knowing that I've been able to see her. I feel like she's so great. I feel like I've been able to see her each time, which has been such a big relief to me because with my office, you're not always able to see the same person each time. But for me, like I love that I'm able to do that. And she has seen me every time and calmed a lot of my fears. And um, that's been like a big answer to prayer is that I've been able to get in and get established with this doctor that I have wanted to get established with for over a year now. And she's been so great. And I'm so glad we were able to do that. Um, yeah, blood work looked really well. Um, all of my levels have looked great. Um, I had my very first appointment really early, kind of like a confirmation basically. And I was able to actually get in with this doctor and I didn't have an ultrasound because it was too early at that point. Um, but then at six weeks I had my first ultrasound. Actually, I think I was like 
five weeks, six days or something, which is pretty early for an ultrasound, but I had my first one then, and we were actually, I don't have the picture with me, we were actually to see, able to see the baby, like the fetal pole, um, the yolk sac, the sac, and a heartbeat on the baby, which it was really early to like actually be able to see that, but we did, and it was such a relief knowing that it was going well at that point, and then I had another ultrasound like a week and a half or two weeks later just to make sure things were continuing to progress. Things were great at the next one. I honestly haven't had any issues. Um, there was like one point I had a little bit of spotting, which worried me, but that resolved itself and nothing was wrong. Um, first trimester, obviously the emotions of the first trimester is a lot, especially the first trimester after two back-to-back -back losses is a lot emotionally. Obviously all the uh, worry and fear of something happening again. Um, it, besides that though, like how I've, I felt during the first trimester, I felt really bad <laughs> the first trimester. And when you think about it, I, I think I said this, I went through the first trimester like there was a glare this was my third time in just over a year going through the the whole first trimester and with the last pregnancy i was almost done with her whole first trimester the third time in a year and like i said arguably like the hardest trimester I've, to me it is so hard because sickness really bad fatigue um those are tough and especially when you have other kids like the fatigue and the sickness um, it was really a really rough trimester for me. Um, for the first like 10 weeks, I was sick. I've been taking Unisomin B6. I've been taking it not every night and that has definitely helped. I felt sick. I have had a lot of aversions, a lot of food aversions where anything that I've ate before, used to eat, like all the healthy things I would eat, like nothing sounded good. I had a bad aversion to coffee for a long time. I don't anymore, but couldn't drink iced coffee for a while and the versions were really bad um of course all the like unhealthy things were kind of none of the healthy things that i used to eat sounded good so i'll like i feel like maybe y'all could tell like the what i eat today videos hadn't posted one of those in a long time because honestly most days what i would eat is what i could stomach that day um and then the fatigue was it was a lot um i was so tired and that's really tough um in the summer with kids and we i remember we had already decided to homeschool like after we found out i was pregnant we decided to make that decision as we were like approaching um not long out from when i knew we were going to start homeschooling i was i was still like having really rough days and i remember thinking like how am i going to do this how i'm going to homeschool my kids wow feeling like this but i knew by the time we started school i would be at a point to where i sh would hopefully kind of start feeling a little bit better and like literally like a week before we started our homeschool year like i had like such a turnaround with how i felt like i started not feeling so sick not feeling so tired the fatigue was so much better food aversions were so much better and i just started having more energy and i just felt like such a big answer to prayer that I started feeling so much better um, right before we started school. And honestly, like we've been doing school now. We just finished up our second week. Yeah, second week today. And it just went very well. Um, I felt good to be able to help them with everything they need. Honestly, our days, like they're like taught on a computer, but I feel like I don't sit down every day um, because I'm like grabbing them books and they have questions about things i'm helping them with that and uh just like i feel like i'm not sitting down every day but thankfully i have now that i'm pretty just about in the second trimester thing like i have just started feeling so much better things have i just feel good i just feel so much better now and i even feel like now that i'm a little bit farther along and i feel like so many other things sound good to eat now like there's like i feel like i can start like back my meal preps um like there's one meal prep that i've actually shared a few times on here that has sounded so good the last few days that i'm like i've got to make that soon i'm gonna meal prep that soon hopefully i'll be able to share more things like that on here like more healthier meal preps because I am definitely one that always gains a lot of weight during pregnancy. Like I'm never one that's 
just in the belly i am always one that gains a lot of weight i wish like i was one of those that didn't gain hardly anything and only was like all belly but i'm like not that like every pregnancy i've never been like that one of the kids are coming in um but i i always look at it as this is hopefully the last time i'm doing this it's always easy for me to lose it after delivery um i like with cal i gained a lot of weight i was like my heaviest i've ever been but then after his delivery i was able to i kind of got right back on track with healthy eating and i feel like i lost it pretty quickly um so i always look at that like this is the last time i'm doing this it's okay and but i think definitely now that i'm feeling so much better i can start making those healthier decisions um not that i've been eating like crazy bad or anything but if you've been pregnant and if you've had really bad aversions you know how that goes and if you've not been some people some people the first trimester is like not like this it's like so much easier for them but not for me so the first trimester that's kind of how it went um i've had like four or five appointments now i feel like maybe like four okay i had to take a little break i'm trying to figure out where i was at my 10 week appointment we decided to go ahead and do the non-invasive prenatal testing we've done that the last two times um it kind of tells the risks of like different trisomies down syndrome um a few other things i don't remember exactly what it tells so we decided to go ahead and do that at in my 10th week um and that also tells the gender which i will talk a little bit about that because that's probably a question i'm going to get asked with cal and with these last two pregnancies that we lost we did not find out the gender we were not going to find out the gender of those babies i loved not finding out with cal and it was just such a good surprise we had three girls finding out he was a boy it was just so fun and there's i just feel like it's not that hard for us i feel like there's so many cute gender neutral stuff with not finding out and it's so fun at birth having that surprise and so the last two times with Cole and then the 12 week loss we had, we were not gonna find out what the babies were. Um, but then after this last loss, I remember thinking, I would probably, if we able are able to get pregnant and have another baby, we'll probably find out just because it just felt right to find out this time is the best way I can put it. It just, after Ethan and I both talked about it, we talked about not finding out, we talked about finding out. It just felt right to go ahead and find out what this baby is and so we decided to do the nipt the biggest thing for me was just making sure everything was healthy and low risk with that but it was a plus being able to find out the gender with that um everything was low risk which is definitely a big relief um and ethan and i both together we were able to find out that the baby was a boy we didn't film any of that um we literally like sat on our bed closed our door because the kids were like in here playing because at that point the kid the kids literally just found out yesterday that i was pregnant and then we did a little gender reveal with them but um at that point the kids had no idea and we wanted to find out like together just he and i and we found out he was a boy and it was just like the first thing i said to ethan was like it just feels really redemptive that this baby's a boy my it i didn't have a strong intuition what the baby was I think Ethan, whenever before, right before we found out, I was looking at my phone. I was like, "What do you think it is?" I think he said, "Boy, I if I I guessed a girl. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't have like a strong intuition. I was like, I'm gonna guess a girl, but it was a boy. You know, we we're we're literally we are just like thrilled at the thought of another boy. We have three girls and we'll have two boys, and like how perfect is that? So the next thing is I had my. Um, maternal fetal medicine appointment yesterday i don't know if i'll go the whole pregnancy or i know i, I go back in a, uh, about a month for my anatomy scan and they'll do that there but she referred me just with recurrent losses and i eventually have like blood pressure issues i've always delivered early due to preeclampsia not like super early but and so i went to maternal fetal medicine they did a in-depth ultrasound of the baby and we were able to get some really good pictures like he just looked like so big in these pictures i'll see if i can show y'all like like his profile 
There he is. And then we got lots of other pictures. Actually, they were able to confirm he's a boy. You were able to see that already, which surprised me. Uh, we got pictures of like his foot and his legs. Um, his heartbeat was 162 and it just, went really well with the ultrasound and then um the doctor afterwards was great he was like you know i know you've had you know your, your last two losses he said at this point where you're at like a chance of you having another loss is um i think he said less than three percent which made me feel good about going ahead and telling our kids even though i was a little bit farther along with cole and we lost him it made me feel okay about telling the kids and also announcing to y'all and to the rest of our like families and stuff and um anyways that went really well so we just talked about a lot of things but i go back for my anatomy skin there and i was trying to think okay and then we got home yesterday and we decided to go ahead and tell the kids ethan we didn't film any of that but we decided to go ahead and tell them delaney has been on to me for weeks she knows how I feel during pregnancy. I mean, like I said, third time in just over a year. She knows my cravings. She knows how I feel. She just catches on to those things. And a big, a big thing with her, and she'll tell everybody, like, mom only drinks Coke when she's pregnant. Like, I don't like coffee for a long time, but I love regular Coke. I'll drink, like, one of the small bottles of regular Coke in the morning, and that's what I love, which I hadn't drank that in a while because I... I usually crave it like in the first several weeks, but she's noticed that several things like she's noticed where she's definitely called on, but I've never confirmed that with her um, just because I wanted to wait a while. Um, and then Rian has said lots of things like uh, she said, I hope we don't lose this baby too. And she's like, I'm so excited. This is the best day of my life was one of the things she said yesterday when we told them. She said lots of little things that I wish I would have taken took note of because it was really sweet. Um, after we told them, I said, go to your rooms and pick out either pink or blue. A pink shirt or a blue shirt or dress or whatever. And whatever you think the baby is, come out and we're going to do a little reveal with y'all. And they were so excited that we already knew what the baby was and we were going to pop a balloon to do a little reveal with them. So, Rian and Delaney were convinced we were having a boy. And they were hoping we were having a boy. And Millie was hoping for a girl. And she put on a pink dress. And Cal kept saying a girl. So I had these like corally looking shorts. He didn't really have anything pink. So I put that on him because he said a girl. And the kids were so excited. Um, especially the girl, uh, the big girls. Delaney and Ren were so excited that it was a boy. That's what they were hoping for. And that's what they thought it was. And it was just really sweet like telling them and that like they just were like jumping up and down like so excited and they've been talking about it non-stop since we told them yesterday cal still don't uh, like he says like baby in my belly i don't think he quite is like gets it yet um but yeah that's how things have went i am due towards the beginning of march and i have always had my babies at 37 weeks every pregnancy that has went to term i've always been induced at 37 weeks so likely we'll have a february baby however i hope we can make it to march because if you if y'all been around here for the last few years whenever we had cal he was born at 37 weeks and he had to stay in the NICU for like nine days and that we had to be like transferred out to a new hospital and that was really traumatic um like just like realizing he's had issues they had to transfer him out then they had to transfer me out to that hospital this time i'm hoping to deliver at a different hospital i want to be in the right spot if that happens again especially because we know it's a boy um but i'm really hoping we can make it to march likely like i said if it's like any of the other ones, we'd probably have a February baby. We have a January, possibly February. If this baby comes in February, we have March, April, and May. So is that not crazy? January, possibly February, March, April, May. Or January, two Februarys, or two Marches, then April and May. So I think that's pretty cool to think about. But hopefully, prayerfully, we can make it a little bit longer this time is what I'm really, really hoping for. But... I'm so excited. We are actually going to go take some pictures this evening. I got a, got, uh, got a blue dress. We're going to dress in like blue. The kids have like either a blue bow or something blue. And we're going to take a few pictures. Um, 
and yeah we're excited i'm excited to hopefully do this one last time i would love your prayer prayers for a healthy rest of this pregnancy and just for things to go well y'all have been through here with me through a lot and i've shared a lot with y'all and so many of y'all just care about our family i've said that so many times so many, so many of y'all just really care about our family and care about me and i'm excited to bring you along for these next several months. Mm -hmm.